Hello everyone and welcome back to Crack Jack Cards. Today I will be doing a video to honor the late Willie Mays, one of the greatest baseball players to ever live. Uh, he just passed away a couple days ago, uh, yesterday actually. Um, and so to honor him, I decided that I was going to pull a couple of uh, my favorite items from my collection of Willie Mays. Um, so I've got some cards, I've got some programs, and I've also have this very awesome thing that you guys should stick around to see. Um, it's a, yeah, I'm sure lots of you have never seen this before, and that's a record, a Mars Candy Bar record. Uh, this is the cover for it, but um, Willie Mays is in there, and I'll be playing you guys at the end of the video his part of uh, the record. So yeah, um, I hope you guys stick around to see that at the end. Uh, it's really cool. I think it's really cool. And I know a lot of you guys will think that's pretty cool too. But anyway, uh, let's get into this video. I have just a couple items to show you guys. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, everybody. So I'm going to start off with, I only pulled four Willie Mays cards that I found. Um, and starting off, we have a 1970 uh, 1970 tops Willie Mays and this card was actually from my dad's collection from uh, when he was a kid so a very cool card um, my first Willie Mays card I've ever had actually and um, yeah pretty nice except for a little it's like uh, cut in the corner a little bit but still very awesome card the next card I pulled is this 1962 home run leaders uh, Willie Mays down in that left corner, also featuring Orlando Cepeda and Frank Robinson. Uh, this is a really nice card. I, this is also, I think this might have been the second um, Willie Mays card I ever had. Uh, this next card is another card of not just Willie Mays, and that is one of my favorite cards in my collection, um, and that is the Superstars card from 1968. And this card includes Harmon Killebrew, Willie Mays, and Mickey Mantle. Um, really cool card of course many of you know i absolutely love harman killebrew he's my favorite player as a twins fan um yeah really nice looking card and the last card that i pulled out for you guys is this 1961 willie mays graded a four in sgc um, i'm actually thinking about cracking this just so i can put it in one of my binders because i don't really like my cards graded very much because I like to have them all organized and binders and everything. But yeah, this is a 1961 Topps Willie Mays. So now I'm going to get into uh, some of the magazines and more miscellaneous things. I have three items left to show you guys. And this one is very, very cool. Uh, another really cool item. Not the, um, not the record, but this is still very awesome. Uh, if many of you, I'm sure many of you do know maybe, but Willie Mays actually played for the Minneapolis Millers and living in Minnesota, that kind of uh, means a lot. So this is a little program from, uh, it's it's a menu uh, from a, the Boosters Banquet, as you can see. Um, Eddie Stanky on the front. Uh, this is for the Minneapolis Millers. This is from 1956. And inside here you see uh, some a lots of big names here, including George Mikan. Um, but also at the bottom there, you see Willie Mays because he played for the Minneapolis Millers. Here's the back. Very cool item. I picked that up at the Minnesota uh, Card Show um, this year. I haven't showed you guys that yet. That was a very cool pickup. Um, this next one is my favorite program featuring Willie Mays, and it's not really a program, it's more of a comic book actually, but very nice looking. Uh, you got Leo DeRocher in, in the middle there, Monty Irvin, Bobby Thompson, and of course Willie Mays. Uh, really cool, you can see it's actually a comic book, but the cover on this is so nice. Here's the back, 1951 National League pennant winners. So. This is actually his rookie year, 1951, and yeah, really cool. I really like the cover on this, though. 
And then the last program, program I pulled out is this 1954 Time Magazine. Uh, really nice color, uh, really nice cover. And yeah, I mean, there's not much to say here. Great picture of Willie Mays right there. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys liked all these items. But now I'm gonna go upstairs I'm gonna go set up my record player and I'm gonna play that record for you guys. This one right here. This is the thing I showed at the start of the video. And I hope you guys stick stuck around because this is actually pretty cool. Willie Mays is in there giving tips and everything. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the, uh, this next part. So here is the record. Uh, there's four players on here. I'm just gonna play the Willie Mays part as you can see, Mars uh, candy bars. And I'm just gonna be playing the Willie Mays part for you guys. Uh, I hope you guys like it after it's done playing. I'll probably end the video. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys enjoy this, the voice of Willie Mays. Willie Mays talking to us here, one of the greatest outfielders in the game of baseball. Willie's gonna tell you boys just how to play that outfield. Willie, what is your advice to these youngsters? Well, I would advise them, first of all, Louis, is, is not to try to copy a, a major league ball player because a lot of times I I, I did it myself. I, when I uh, first started playing ball, I used to try to copy a DiMaggio and the way he feel. And I found out that it was a little, a little difficult for me to do things like that. I would advise them, I think of go out there and catch the ball the best way they know how to do it. And, and I feel that a lot of times uh, it would be better for them as they grow up. Because, uh, you know, kids, when they're young, they have a tendency to uh, do things uh, like uh, another guy do it. I, I don't advise that. And what do you uh, say in advice to getting under a fly ball? Do you get directly under the ball when it comes down? Well, I, I, I try to do that, Lou. I try to, uh, what you call, camp on a, a ball and try to uh, wait for the ball to come, come down. But the most important thing in that is uh, to make sure that you are facing the infield and make sure that you're in a position to throw the ball whenever you catch a, catch a fly ball. Do you anticipate... Uh, that every ball is going to be hit to you in the outfield? I, I do. I, that's the only way to play outfield because then you will be alert. And then at other times, uh, the ball may not be uh, hit to you, but you always be alert to uh, go to either either side, right or left side. And when you start after a ball, to the left or to the right, Willie, do you cross over or, and, do, and do you keep your head directly on the ball at all times, your eyes? Well, I, a lot of times I, I think that it is the correct way. When the ball is hit, always try to keep your eye on the ball because a lot of times uh say for instance, uh, if the wind is blowing uh, a little hard you may uh, have a chance to to blow the ball over your head then if you take your eye off the ball well you, you probably won't see the ball i would suggest at all times keep your eye on the ball and what about starting out are you uh, over uh, with your hands on your knees ready to start uh, as soon as the ball leaves the bat or do you use a stand-up position i i think the stand-up position is a bad position for an outfielder because actually you don't get a, a what you call a quick getaway when you're doing things like i think that the down position is a better position because then you can go either way without any trouble at all and you watch that ball as soon as it is released from the pitcher's hand. Very much so. Mm -hmm. And what about ground balls, Willie? Do you always charge a ground ball? Now, I, I had trouble myself a little with ground balls when I first came up. But I used to practice on that a lot. And I found that by practicing on, on a ground ball, that you, you would come to, to be a real guy on charging ball. And I, I play in the infield a little bit on, on, to uh, approve myself in the outfield on ground balls. Now that I... Uh, I, play, I, I charge ball pretty good, and I, I think it's easy for me to do that. Well, what would you suggest for a, a youngster starting out? Would you say that he should play shallow, or should he play deep, uh, or is it up to the individual himself? I, that's right. I think it's up to the individual to, to play shallow or play back. If he can go back, if he's the type of guy who can go back, I think he should play shallow. Now, a lot of times, you see, I feel it can only go one way, and that's in. I would advise him to play back because then his best way is going to come in. in. And what type of throw, Willie? Overhand or sidearm, or do you get rid of the ball as quick as possible? Now, it's a lot of different ways that an uh, outfielder throws the ball. Now, a lot of guys throw the ball sidearm, which I think is sales a little bit. But my way of throwing, and I think it's correct, is directly overhand, and the ball doesn't do anything but go straight. Well, boys, take that advice, and you may be another Willie Mays. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lou.
Baseball Tips from the Stars by Mars Candy. Mars Candy has two other special records for you. One is how to bat with Duke Snyder, Ken Boyer, Ernie Banks, and Stan the Man Musial. The other is how to pitch with Joey J, Johnny Padres, Don Drysdale, and Warren Spahn. Have you heard them? They're sure to help you. So long for now. Good luck and good fielding. <laughs>